Welcome back and welcome to the beautiful island of Koh Lanta. Yes, Koh Lanta is a beautiful island here in the southern province of Krabi. And I've been here for a week already actually, getting to know the island and just exploring so that I could give you the best video possible, which will sum up my opinions of this island, whether you should come to this island or not, which you should definitely should. And look, it's huge. It's got a giant national park at one end. It's got an incredible bridge and beaches along the coasts, an old town, lots of history, lots of delicious food. And look, I, I, I'm just gonna try my best today to show you Koh Lanta, and I hope you're gonna enjoy this video. My name is Paddy Doyle, and this is my little Honda dream, and welcome to Next Level Adventures. Right now, we are attempting to visit every single province in Thailand. We've had some incredible adventures already, but the best part is we're only just getting started. So subscribe and join us as we discover this incredible country together. Okay, so this video is gonna be in three parts. The first part is I'm gonna show you my accommodation. It's been an incredible luxury apartment rental, long-term rental. If you saw the latest video, I had to kind of hunker down here on Koh Lanta and wait to see what happened then with the COVID stuff. And I've been here a week and it's been amazing. So let me give you a tour of this place. Then we'll meet on the bike, we'll drive around. I'll tell you what I love about this island. I'll tell you what I don't like about this island. And then we'll go explore the jungle Trek waterfall, the national park. I haven't been there yet. You guys have been recommending it, so we'll discover that together. And then at the end of the video, I'll save the best till last. I'll tell you the reason why that Koh Lanta is special in the realm of Thai islands and what sets it apart. Because um, living here for a week and maybe an extra week, uh, I haven't decided. Maybe I'll decide by the end of this video, but um, this island is, is special. Okay, welcome to the Airbnb tour. Now, this is literally 10 seconds after I finished the last episode because I just moved in. I haven't really had a look around yet and I just thought it's gonna get messy and I'm gonna trash the place very quickly. So let's, let me show you around before I do that. So, out here is the balcony area. It's huge, actually, and there's outside furniture, a nice plant, good lighting, and a fan. Very important, so I don't have to be blasting air con. And then outside here, by the way, if you open this door, it's a sliding door into an outside sunbathing area and a pool. Let me show you. So this is a communal pool and it is next to the apartment. Um, so I'm hoping it's not gonna be too noisy. Um, but yeah, just a little kid's splash pool basically. And every night the sun is gonna set in this direction over the ocean. I'll have amazing views obviously from the balcony as well. And then you come into the living room area and it is beautiful. It's very well uh, furnished. Got a very large comfortable sofa which opens up into a bed. So if you have guests or a third person they can sleep there. Really nice furniture and fittings. A big fridge freezer, microwave and an oven. A washing machine so I can actually do my own laundry and then I can dry it out here on the balcony which will take five seconds here in Thailand. Lots of, you know, wine glasses, cheese graters, it's a fully equipped kitchen, knives, uh, blender, coffee machine, everything you'd need to hunker down and to feel at home. Um, and what an incredible price, only 4,000 baht for seven nights. This is why I wanted to show you the flat now because look how beautiful the bed is and really nice just shelving, storage, and there's an actual bunk bed at the end of my bed. So if you are a family, mummy and daddy here, have the toddler up there and put granny on the sofa. <laughs> and again, loads of storage space underneath the bunk bed. And I'm gonna trash this place and I'm gonna love it. And yeah, I'm really impressed with this building, this location, and the price, oh my God, the price. There's actually a couple more communal pools, one sort of splash pool for the kids, an adult pool where the kids aren't allowed to play, make a noise, and there are loads of different options as well. You, I just had a small apartment, but you can get beach villa houses, uh, larger apartments, three bedroom, two bedroom, ones with their own private pool. Just check out their website, I'll leave it below. Honestly, it was the highlight of my week on Koh Lanta, was the accommodation and how I felt. I felt like I was part of the family the whole time I was there, and I'll talk more about it later but let's get on the bike and let me show you around the island 
All right, and welcome to our tour of Koh Lanta. And uh, look, let me just get the bad stuff out of the way really quickly. The first thing you're going to notice when you get to this island is the roads are a joke. They are under construction, potholes everywhere, random sand parts here trying to cover up bigger potholes. It's a hazard. If you are not experienced, uh, do not drive around on a moped because you'll be whizzing along like this, like, oh, isn't this amazing? Yeah, Kalanta. And then look, I know that the potholes are here, so I've slowed down, but you will whiz straight through this and potentially break on the gravel, back tire will go, your girlfriend flies off the handlebars, grazed knees and elbows and broken hearts. So please be careful on the roads in Koh Lanta. And the second thing is, you know, this is the first time we've come to a touristy island uh, or, or a destination that is built on foreign tourism. And so because that's been starved for the last year, you notice that immediately. Many businesses have closed down and it's, it's terribly sad to see. Long Beach, where I'm staying, has a couple of cafes and I, you know, I've had brunch in, in, in a few places, I've had coffees in a few places um, and you know, I've had some good experiences in the little pockets of places that remain open but the majority have closed and I don't want to show you because it's you know, distasteful to say, oh my god, this, this beach is a ghost town. Um, I don't want to show that, I want to just let you know that when you come here guys, do not expect the Las Vegas Strip. This island has suffered, and you'll notice that immediately. Having said that, let's snap out of that little uh, melodramatic segment, because it is, I had to be honest with you, okay? You'll, when you first get to Koh Lanta, if you look around and go, I don't know about this place, guys, that's normal. Just, just explore the island and get to know it. It took me three days to really get the frequency of this place. But now that I understand it, I understand that life is slow. Things go slowly. And I've adapted to that. And so I have to drive slowly, otherwise I'll have an accident. <laughs> anyway, let me show you the first cool place. So yeah, the best thing about Koh Lanta, in my experience, from the week I've been here, sorry, this, <laughs> this, this uh, broken and down disused restaurant is shaking and I don't know if it's because it's not been maintained for a year. Let me stand near the metal. Okay, um, the best part is just driving and I know I've just been bitching about the road, but honestly the southern part of the island, the roads get so much better, they're practically potholeless and much nicer to drive on. And you've got the coast on your right hand side the whole way and you just drive down a little soy and you find a beach, you drive a little bit more, you find another beach. There are nine beaches in total and okay, I'm not on the island in the correct season. Normally these waters are crystal clear and smooth and flat, but we're getting blasted here by wind and currents uh, just because of the rainy seasons on its way. And so as you can see, um, I've been flying the drone uh, at each beach to show you. Um, they are beautiful still, but they're not certainly somewhere you'd lie down and sunbathe just because of the, the sand's all wet and it's getting battered by the winds. But yeah, for sure, the, the coolest part for me on my little Honda, obviously, is just exploring and that's what we're going to continue to do. Just at the very bottom of the island is a small national park and there's a beautiful lighthouse, there's a little trek we can do. You guys have recommended it, so we're going to do that and then just in the inland here, where it's really spectacular, the nature. There's a, a small trek to a waterfall, which someone has really encouraged me to go check out. So we'll go do that as well. Uh, and I've not done the national park and I've not done the waterfall, so it should be a, a fun experience together. Just finished filming that piece over there. This is a little behind the scenes. Sometimes I like to tell you, tell you these things, share you these things. Um, I try to film like a really more in-depth review, really of Koh Lanta a couple of days ago. But I'm stuck in a rut, guys. I'm stuck in a creative rut. And I kind of, today I snapped out of it a little bit. Um, by the way, can you see those resorts up there? They all have their own private pool and uh, they overlook this beautiful beach. 
and I flew the drone earlier. Oh, I need to lift my bag. <laughs> I flew the drone earlier and uh, they look amazing. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I just, oh, to be honest, I I really struggled to like to, to make a video on Koh Lanta. I got stuck in a creative creative block. The seeing seeing the destruction. Look, you see all this. This is these are all restaurants and people's businesses and things. And you know, seeing that kind of took me aback a little bit. Shit. And it affected me a little bit negatively. I didn't feel good. There's a little lizard here. Samadita! Oh, monkeys! Wow, a lot of monkeys. Little baby ones. What's up, guys? Should we get a little bite to eat? So we have some energy for this little trek. Hello! Cow pad, mate. No, cow pad, mo. A cow pad guy. Yeah. And I can see one little lady and a dog. Welcome to Thailand in 2021. <laughs> Pristine beach with one purse on it. This place looks nice. <laughs> I mean, you sat here and bamboo structure overlooking an incredible beach. When I ordered cow pad, that just means fried rice, and then mu means with pork, or gai means with chicken. And then blamuk is like squid. I like that one the most. But uh, yeah, cow pad, you know, from Thai fried rice. They're normally cheap. They normally give you everything you need for a little walk and an adventure. And a cheeky little Sprite. Okay, you might be able to see in the basket, that is the uh, leftovers of that fried rice. It was huge. It was 130 baht for a fried rice and a, and a Sprite, which is pretty expensive if you ask me. Food is a little bit more expensive on the island and talking of money, look, we're here now at the National Park headquarters. They're gonna charge me 200. I am gonna show them my Thai driving license and see if they let me in for cheaper. Let's see what happens. One ticket. I have a Thai driving license. Oh. No? No discount, no? Thai citizen means a person of Thai nationality. A foreigner means a person who does not have a Thai nationality. Okie dokie. It's windy. I look like uh, what do I look like? An, an idiot. <laughs> uh, we we tried. We tried to get the the the, the tie rate, or or at least a discount. But uh, no luck. Paying uh, paying income tax for eight years uh, and working in Thailand for eight years doesn't work all the time. Sad to say. There is a nature trail which we will do if the weather holds because there's a big storm blowing in. It's all blue skies and beautiful epicness over here but it's like scary dark clouds and god knows what's going to happen. So let's just go up the water, the lighthouse and then we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe this was a 200 baht, 10 minute adventure before a giant storm starts coming across. I, this is definitely the best beach on the island by far because uh, the whole of the uh, west coast where all of the beaches are, it's getting battered by the winds. But this cove here inside the national park is protected by this lighthouse on this rock. Uh, and it's keeping the, the currents and the wind from smashing big waves in here. And therefore the beach is idyllic, the sand is flat and it's pristine. Obviously it's a national park so they're on top of this and there is no trash, it is pristine. And there's a little Thai family over here having a great time. This is where I would come. Uh, if you were here in low season when the beaches are getting smashed, right? And you want to lie in the sea and you want to swim and you want to lie on the beach. Just come here, bring, bring your towel, pay the 200 uh, uh, and, and just come out and, and, and hang out here. So what we'll do is we'll go up 
this trail and we'll get a better vantage. I'm not gonna turn around and look until I get to the lighthouse. But this is fun. The ground is kind of like shelly, you know? So just be careful. Feels a bit like England. The lighthouse is right here, but there's a little bit more. Let's go there. Wow. Mind your feet. Holy moly. Yeah, you're dead if you take one more step. This is fun. This is fun. <clears throat> A little bit dangerous. It's definitely uh, one of those situations where if you had a kid with you, you'd be holding on to them for dear life. And uh, yeah, this is as far as I'm gonna go, but there we go, look at that. Okay, it's not windy here, but it is humid, so we are gonna sweat. And you know why? Because it says here it's two kilometers. Welcome to Le Mantan something, I don't know how to say that. Horseshoe Nature Trail, 220.1 meters, which means two kilometers, they got it wrong. And there's a bunch of stuff. Looks nice. Beware of poisonous wildlife. That's a good start. <laughs> And uh, hopefully it's not just a staircase for two kilometers. Okay, trail update. It is uphill. It's a little bit tricky. But it's... Uh, I like how they haven't really cut back a lot of the forest too much. Makes it feel like you're in the thick of it, you know what I mean? And I'm just hoping that I don't have an encounter with a giant lizard, because <laughs> I've seen a few big ones, like Komodo dragon looking ones. When you're driving on the road, sometimes you see them and they scuttle away. Be careful when you're putting your hand on things like this, <laughs> because these things have got spikes all over them. I just grabbed one really hard and it was like full of spikes. And like, bamboos normally have a spiky bit here and there, but not like, I've never seen it like that. It was completely covered in spikes. Thank you for spiking me, tree. Nature, I need to chill, okay? Like this tree, I need to chill and just grow and not try to hurt anyone. Okay, so. I just like rolled my ankle a little bit, didn't sprain it or break it, but just rolled on like, you know, it's just not, it's, it's not, it's not uh, the easiest path and it just slipped on something, ankle went like that, you know how it is when you side, oh your ankle goes sideways, so I'm just trying to walk it off, but it hurts, ow, <laughs> spiky thing again. I think I'm gonna give up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hobble back to the bike Ugh. and we're gonna go to the waterfall uh, because this trail, I'd say this trail is hard. This, this trail is hard and it's, you know, I think for someone who does nature trails a lot, like me, it's, 
it's difficult. <laughs> and it's spiky and it's mosquito central, by the way. Jesus. And as you can see, I'm struggling with the sweat and the, uh, the ankle. So I didn't really make it that far. Mm. Okay, I've arrived after the National Park here at the ethical elephant experience. Yeah, right. Um, and, okay. Firstly, my ankle is starting to throb, so I don't think we're gonna do this trick. And there's cats in cages here. What's going on? Meow. Hello? 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 Why are you in a cage? Are you naughty? I don't know what's... These guys are not in the cage. Anyway, I don't know if it's that way. I don't know if it's that way. I don't know if it's this way. There's no sign. Um, and... I don't know guys, I, I tried, I always try to keep it positive. I've enjoyed staying at the, the apartment and doing my work and having a bit of solitude. But this island, I have a bad energy. On this island. I feel like th there's two there's two things to this problem. The first problem is me. I stood still for the first time on this trip and I didn't really leave the apartment for three or four days and I was checking my phone anxious about Covid and that affected me and it, it really stunted my creativity and it stunted my happiness and then I I snapped out of it a little bit and I explored the island and it just didn't, it didn't rekindle the love that I need. And I mean, look around guys, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit rugged around the edges, of course, but it, it suffered many things, tsunamis and economic disaster, but there really is only one thing that really has motivated me every single day. One constant daily reminder about how beautiful life is and about how magical this trip is and how fortunate we are to be making it together. And it happens every single day on Koh Lanta better than anywhere else on planet Earth. Honestly, the sun sets. When the sun sets, across the ocean behind the PP Islands. It is something to behold. It is something that every day resets your mind, resets your mood, resets your energy. Remind you, hey, life's beautiful. The world's beautiful. Get out there tomorrow, snap out of it, and go enjoy yourself. And I feel like this is what I'm missing a little bit. I'm missing a crew. Missing someone to talk shit to, you know what I mean? Because me, me and you, we, we, we do this together, but you can't talk back to me. I know you're talking to the screen now, or you're thinking, you're thinking something, but I can't hear you. So sometimes I just envy them. Let's just enjoy this moment. Let's walk on the beach together. Don't worry about that storm out there. That, that will pass before sunset. Hi. You guys scared of the rain? Yeah. I think it's just a little bit, right? I'm from England. England? Yeah. Just traveling around Thailand. Where are you from? Bangkok. Oh, nice Hello. to meet you. When did you come when did you come to Kailanta? Uh yesterday. Oh. And tomorrow. 
Oh, really? Is it the weekend? Yes, yeah, the weekend. Ah, that explains it. Don't uh, ask for your friends to visit Thailand. Oh, that's what I do every day. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go back to my hotel before the rain comes, I think. Have a nice evening. Uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. Okay. Bye. Bye. We almost made it. <laughs> Did you see? We were so close, but the rain caught up with us. And uh, it's beautiful. Watching these rain clouds, it's happened. Nearly every day there's a rain cloud come, uh, comes over the, from the ocean. Sometimes it hits this side of the island, sometimes it hits the north side of the island, or the south, the middle. Sometimes it hits the area that you're in. And uh, one day it was on the entire island, but... You can see that this is just, this is gonna clear. You see, I told you, I told you it was going to get better. Um, and this, by the way, is a sunset that I would scale. Um, seven sunsets I've been here. This is, this is um, one of the worst ones, and it's beautiful. The sun, every night, this time of year, sets behind Koh Phi Phi, as I mentioned maybe before. And it just creates this incredible light show every single night. And... I've shared the, the best ones on Instagram. I even did like a one hour live stream and I just live streamed the sunset and talked to the followers and the people who uh, follow me on Instagram and that was really cool. And um, yeah, this, this place, uh, My, My Lay Highlands, um, I just want to say that it was the highlight of Koh Lanta by far, staying here. There is a really beautiful family that run this place and they made me feel part of the family. Every night I have uh, dinner by the pool and so do they and they invite me to their table and we drink wine and we eat together and we talk and we share stories and it's a mother, father and a son and they have friends staying sometimes and it's just really nice, it's a nice family vibe and so for sure my favourite part of Koh Lanta has been staying here and getting a taste of family life and getting, getting a taste of, you know, real connections. And so, you know, I've got my beer and I've got another sunset. I'm going to go join them and, 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 uh, and have dinner with them. And tomorrow we're going to leave and drive up the coast and, and check out Krabi. We'll do some more interesting, you know, back, back on the road kind of happy feeling videos um, not, not to say Koh Lanta made me depressed I just I don't know I, I, how can I you know every night this is what I'm telling you every night this sunset resets my mind it makes me feel positive it makes me feel like it makes me feel good again but then but then I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want this series to be called Paddy Doyle's Miserable Adventures. <laughs> um, but I also, I also want to share the personal journey involved in this. Let me know if you care. You know, maybe you just want me to highlight the, the, the nice places I stay and, and give you the top five beaches of Koh Lanta. Um, but, you know... This is this is a this is a this is more this is more than just a bike trip. This is this is uh, something more personal that I want to share with you. So yeah, we're gonna leave Koh Lanta tomorrow, and the adventure continues. Next level adventures carry on to the next adventure, obviously. Thank you, Koh Lanta, and I'll see you soon.